Here's another fun one. So I'm going to epoxy these garage floors, which means I got to pull the cabinets because that's the right way to do it. And uh, I'm looking up here and I'll give you just a second to see if you can see it. All right. So you see how this rail is holding up the garage like it's supposed to? Well, look what they bolted to the ceiling. You got one over there. That makes sense, right? And then on the other side, it's not even hanging from the ceiling. It's, <laughs> it's hanging from... Uh, the trim of the cabinet. So the garage door is actually hanging from the cabinet. Isn't that beautiful? One, two, two phase, dryer plugs, no vent. Figure that out. Sledge X, another highly underrated tool. It's like the yin and the yang of the demo world. Before. All right, I've been putting off finishing this closet, at least getting the floor prepped, because I gotta actually remove tons of clothes and cabinets and stuff to get them off the floor for the tile. But I wanted to show um, a little trick for removing tack strips that I do sometimes when I'm in a hurry, but not a lot, then I'll show you why I don't do it all the time. Oh, so whoever put these in really kinda, whoops. They really hammered the nails down. Sometimes they'll just pop right out. See, there you go. Sometimes one big smack and we'll do that. So you take the, the strip off and then, you know, just pop the nails out like that. Um, and it's really fast. Now, ooh, now the reason I don't do that all the time is, let me take one more out. Depending on, you know, how deep they went and kind of what's under the subsurface, when you knock them sideways like that, you can end up doing a lot more damage. Like if I go over here, like you can see when I knocked it sideways, I just completely demolished the corner. Um, so I'm going to have to fill that in later. But anyway, like if you have just kind of a regular post tension slab or like a really hard subsurface and you knock it sideways, it's going to go faster. And you're not going to do a lot of damage. I just, I just am not doing that. Do I want to be a champion or be king of the Vormax with dual ejection flush valves? That sounds cool. Toilet technology has really uh, made leaps and bounds forward. Aqua piston, six liter displacement in a toilet. Man, my, to my uh, toilet could have more torque than my truck does. Oh, come on. Oh, crap. Look, they put tile over here. That was a great idea. That's what happens. Awesome. I'm just never gonna remember where everything is, you know, so I try to take a video of where well, I you know. Yeah. Looks great. So I've got this floor guy that has been working, I kid you not, for about a month now, not full time, but pretty close to it, on doing this absurdly large install. And, the, you know, he's, uh, Jose is just a wizard with tile. He's like really um, specific in how he cleans things so that it actually adheres properly. You don't hear any hollow spots, you know, when you're walking around, jumping on the tile. And, um, you know, I got this spaced out at, I think it's an eighth of an inch, which is recommended. Um, it's just such a large format. It's four feet long. Um, you know, a box, I think I had in a previous video, is 51 pounds. There's only four tiles in a box. So it, it's pretty crazy. We had this furniture delivered yesterday. Um, and it's really starting to come together. You can see how um, it's very modern look going on. Bathroom is a different story. I'll get to that at some point, but uh, really liking the way it's turning out so far. I'm starting to get pretty excited about this raised floor. It's starting to look way different. I'll try to put in a video what it looked like before, but uh, there was you know two double arches here. Knocked that down. The um, 
side. This isn't quite dry yet. But uh, we re kind of retracted this wall, just knocked out more of it to open it up. Got this vent here, which uh, runs under the foundation to the left. And so um, what we did was we, we kind of redirected and it does a U-turn. <laughs> well, actually that's an, that's an air return, so it's an intake. Um, it does kind of a U-turn and comes up um, in elevation. And so now it's in the corner and instead of just kind of being out here on an island in the middle of nowhere. And we did the same thing over here. So this, this air return goes to the other side of the house and we're gonna put it, oops. Uh, we're gonna put it in the floor or it's in the floor now instead of being you know up high so there's pros and cons to that if you've ever lived in a house where it has the air return um starts with an r I forget the word but the little grating on top of it you know if you step on that it's kind of not agreeable with your feet but um you can kind of put a plant or something around it to keep people from walking the weight of the of just filling it in with cement would be way 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 too heavy it's not designed for that and so there's a, um, a frame underneath it which is done at a very specific height and then plywood on top of that and on top of that there's a layer of mortar with cement board this you know hardy backer half inch stuff to make it really super hard so that when we put the tile on top of this it you're not going to be able to tell at all it's not going to be flimsy the grout's not going to crack hopefully you know because it's just going to be really solid even though two inches underneath that, it's gonna be a, a, a wooden frame. While we were down there, um, we did a, a, you can't really see it, but there's a um, electrical outlet right in the middle of the floor. So we're gonna put a flush mount on that. Um, not quite sure what we're gonna do with it yet, but you know, while you got the floor out, might as well run electrical, right? And then in the corners, one, two, three, and then four down here to do um, possibly Atmos, is it Atmos? For atmosphere, for atmosphere, for atmosphere, I don't know. But the, you know, the Dolby kind of upward firing, 3D object voodoo stuff at some point in the future. So I went through 400 feet of a speaker cable that's all gonna terminate here. I can't believe how much speaker wire it is for just this one room. We're having some problems with the engineering and drafting folks, but um, that wall is hopefully gonna come down completely. And then that back to that Flintstones arch is, I'm gonna, uh, cut that out in the next day or so, um, just at least a little bit so that the towel guy can come in as much as possible and just open it up. Steaming off wallpaper is all a timing thing. It takes forever, but you know, you got to hit it with a, with a steamer, just enough to melt the glue, but then not too much or you actually make the previous paint that's under there, if any bubble up and damaging the drywall and all that. So I've been doing, I don't think I have any videos of this, but, um, pretty much every room in the house has had some sort of wallpaper on it. So I'm going around the entire house taking a wallpaper just one strip at a time. For real this time, the last of the carpet in the whole house. It's kind of brown, kind of shaggy type stuff. I know I've said it a lot, but this is really the last, last, last piece of carpet. This is what happens when you over irrigate and flood an area that isn't supposed to be flooded. You get all this creeping Charlie or whatever it is, and then you gotta go through and spray. Oh, it's just everywhere. It's a nightmare. <laughs> there you go. What? That is terrifying. It's almost horizontal. Before this drywall gets fixed, I'm gonna take the opportunity to put in some outlets in the ceiling in this garage. Never underestimate the power of ceiling outlets. It's very useful for fans and various types of pumps and lights and stuff, because um, while I got all these flush mount lights in, if I look down, you won't see a shadow anywhere around my leg, which is kind of ideal so you can actually see what you're doing. Costco had these on sale. It'll be nice to uh, 
finally be able to wash your hands after using the lube, if you know what I'm saying. Day one of three, floors just started going in. I'm gonna be so excited to get my tools in here. Paint isn't par perfect, but it's good enough. These stem wall expansion joint cracks that we're gonna be a bear, I'm sure. Look at that, that's horrible. So this will be the third garage I've done with this product. It comes out really well. The only issue I've had um, isn't with the epoxy, but with the UV resistance of that, um, not the polyaspartic, but the uh, like polyurethane type coating they put on top. So this time I'm gonna do something a little different, but um, I don't know. I just think the gray looks really good. And then this one has these sparkly mica chips in it that I haven't done before. So hopefully this one will be have a little more bling. I think the most satisfying part about doing these outlet replacements where you just kind of rewire and rebox and re-everything these things is that last part when you get the faceplate lined up and then you get to put the screws in and it looks brand new again. The floor is done. It's got a cure for a couple days, but you can see the little mica chips in it make it a little more sparkly than it normally would. I like it. Next is gonna be the baseboards in a couple days and finally move my tools in. It'll be fantastic to get a proper garage again. So I didn't uh, take video most of it, but I've been doing these baseboards for, oh, I don't know, three weeks. Um, you know, hundreds of feet, linear feet, just cutting and painting and tacking them up. So it's the final step. Water heater lift. It was something that I just kind of put in there just so I wouldn't have to worry about any code issues or anything like that in the future. Plus it's kind of nice to get it off the ground anyway. Okay, the garage is pretty much complete now. Um, I've got all my cabinets up on both sides, a little pegboard here. I like that steel type look. It makes it look kind of manly, you know. Um, sorry, excuse the disaster. I'm still getting stuff put away. I got my ammo cans. I have those spaced out so they fit ammo cans perfectly because that's how I roll. Uh, on the other side, I've got my welding cart. I always like to have that where you can just easily wheel it in and out of the garage um, so you don't you know, mess up your floor. And usually when you're working on stuff, you want a big area. So clamp rack, you can never have enough clamps. When you think you do, you don't because you never have enough of the one you need at the moment. I haven't quite finished all the trim. The way that they hung this jam um, doesn't line up very well with the way that the the drywall floating worked out. Anyway, it still looks pretty good. You wouldn't really notice unless you were involved in putting it up. Painting came out pretty well. Um, just got done caulking all of these. This is the trim that I'm putting up pretty much everywhere. So there's a couple thousand square or linear feet that I've done over the past uh, two months. You can see it came out really well. That is how you remodel a garage in only about 10 minutes. It's just that easy. Go do it.